Hi everyone, this is DV Supramaniam. Welcome to Stress Tougher CA and CMA. In this lecture, I cover payment of Gratuity Act 1972. So the word gratuity originally derived from Latin word, it is a gratuitous. So the meaning of gratuity, I'll discuss after a small moment. See the title of the act, Payment of Gratuity Act 1972, date of implementation 16th September 1972 extent it is applicable to whole of India the main objective of this act is every employer to whom payment of gratuity act is applicable is liable to pay gratuity to employees so primarily you know every factory plantation oil fields mines ports railways shops and other establishments very easy to remember you know on the ground you can find factory plantation under the ground oil fields mines and then uh, two transportation undertakings that is port and railway companies next one coming to the shops and other establishments for example dmart best price is it clear so to all these establishments our payment of gratuity act is applicable and it regulates payment of gratuity by employer to employee see the meaning of gratuity it's a lump sum amount paid by the employer to employee at the time of termination of service not daily, not weekly, not monthly or not yearly. Only at the time of termination of service, employee is entitled to receive lump sum amount from employer. Of course, gratuity, gratuitous, here you, here you think that it is a free of cost. But consideration can be non-monetary, right? See, every employee is not eligible to gratuity. An employee who works for five continuous years of service, five continuous years of service he is entitled to receive gratuity from employer point of view this employee working for five years that means employer is saving lot of training expenditure defects rectification cost imagine uh, a worker is relieving from the organization now I'll recruit new person so new person training cost new person initial output is subject to certain defects again you know defects rectification cost all these costs I'm saving because of this employee long term service. That's why employer is liable to pay lump sum amount to employee. Why employee is entitled to receive gratuity, sir? Because he is having two options. One is business. The second one is employment. In business, he can work up to his last breath. Whereas coming to employment, he can work up to 58 years or 60 years after attaining 58 years he is not supposed to work in the organization he should come out of the organization technically speaking superannuation so he is uh, selecting employment ignoring business so he the best opportunity he foregone is business so from that point of view employee is entitled to receive gratuity see this lump sum amount uh, will be paid by employer only at the time of termination of service the termination of service service comes to an end because of these two reasons one is superannuation attaining age of 58 years retirement retirement is something other than superannuation example I joined organization for five years five years agreement period completed now I'll come out of that organization it comes under retirement so don't think that retirement is 58 years or 60 years no retirement is not superannuation superannuation is different retirement is different my agreement over so that's why I'm coming out of the organization I'll call it as retirement next sir, resignation yes I resign from the job next one permanent disablement accident permanent disablement simply accident next one death so in case of superannuation retirement as resignation you should satisfy condition number two the condition number two is five years condition number two is five years so total two conditions you need to satisfy one is termination of service second one is five years of continuous service but coming to the permanent disablement death uh, there is no such requirement you work for one year you are eligible to receive gratuity for one year of course in these cases nominee or legal head will receive the gratuity in these cases employee will recover uh, sorry employee will get a gratuity amount I'll discuss this point a little bit later don't get worry next one so first of all what is continuous service what is continuous service when we can call an employee said to be in continuous service sir for that we had you know 
two tests in entire payment of gratuity act there is no word called test but for your understanding i'm telling a uh, two tests first uh, implement test one test one is uninterrupted service that means employee is in service without any interruption sir without any break sir now he is said to be in continuous years of service continuous service sorry he is said to be in continuous service without any break without any break if he is working in the organization we call it as uninterrupted service that means you know continuous service satisfied during this uninterrupted service certain interruptions they looks like breaks but you should not call them as break they are also treated as uninterrupted service suppose employee fell sick covid malaria etc so sickness leave even though it looks like interruption it is not interruption you should consider it as uninterrupted service next uh, accident leave so during employment he fell down during employment he fell down so he faced accident that's why he took leave uninterrupted service lockout because of some regulatory issues excise department or gst department came to the establishment and they sealed the establishment seizure of establishment after one month again factory came back to normal position establishment came back to working position now all those workers uh, continued their work now one month whatever the period one month it looks like that employee is not working but you should consider it as uninterrupted service because this is not on the fault of employee next one lay off just uh, uh, last month you might have observed because of uh, russia and ukraine war you now we face crisis oil rates increased you no know, lack of raw materials lack of raw materials employer is not in a position to provide work to all 100% of employees that's why he requested certain employees so every month 20 employees 20% of employees you just uh, go to your home every one month you know uh, in a year take one month uh, break take one month break so lay off so a category people january b category people february c category people uh, uh, march like that lay off was imposed so after completion of that month again employees will come back and they will work in the organization now that lay off period should not be considered as a uh, interruption you should treat it as uninterrupted service next one strike no demanding for more bonus demanding for promotions demanding for salary hikes so it is their right to make a strike and that's why even though it looks like interruption we call it as uninterrupted service and any reason you know cessation of work not due to employee fault suppose we thought that employee he looted certain cash from cash box that's why we dismiss him during investigation we came to know that employee is very innocent and we found real uh, person who looted cash now mr e we took back mr e into the employment and one month dismissal period you should not consider it as an interruption you should treat it as uninterrupted service so above interruptions or not uh, interruptions you should consider them as uninterruptions sir beyond this there is an interruption sir beyond this you know if the if these are the interruptions we will consider it them as uninterruptions but he took more leave that leave is not because of uh, sickness not because of accident not because of lockout not because of lay off sir in that case apply test 2 if test 1 is failed then apply test 2 sir what is test 2 sir where you are working sir employees are working in mines or employees are working in establishment where working days in a week is less than 6 days working less than 6 days a week in that case 190 days per year that means if worker is working for 200 days imagine worker is working for 200 days that's it he is in continuous service for that year he is in continuous service for that year in case of other establishment that means other than mines or establishments having working 6 days a week working schedule 6 days a week in that case 240 working days are required 240 working days are required suppose uh, if you take any soft, uh, software industry for them you know five days a week saturday sunday holiday right they comes under first category so 190 days you need to verify factory sir they working in factory or they working in best price they working in dmart shops and establishment sir in that case if you check their attendance register 240 days present sir now they are said to be in continuous service there said to be continuous service and part in excess of 6 months what is this part in excess of 6 months suppose an employee worked for 26 years 
seven months. Now is he entitled to the gratuity for 26 years or 27 years, sir? 27 years. Part in excess of six months, you should consider it as one full year. You should consider it as one full year. Now while verifying, while checking that in excess of six months, if that employee is working for 95 days in first industry or 120 days in second industry, we can declare that he is in continuous service. So 120 days under in which industry, sir? Other industries. 95 days in which industry, sir? Mines or establishment having working days less than six days a week. In those cases, exactly half ma. No need to remember, no need to mug up. 190 half 95, 240 half 120 days. While calculating this 190, 240, certain days like layoff, maternity leave, leave with wages, temporary disablement that occurred during employment shall be considered. I'll tell you an example. Suppose a woman worker, woman worker joined a, a, a woman joined factory. That factory is operating six days a week. Six days a week. Now when we can call W is in continuous service when W attended the job 240 days or more then you can consider W is in continuous service. The point she attended actually 160 days sir. Why? She took maternity leave. Okay maternity leave 26 weeks. 26 weeks. Suppose she took maternity leave of 100 days only sir. Okay add 100 days. Now total how much? 260 days. For us, 240 is the requisite. 240 is the condition. She work, work for 260 days. Happy. So, W is in continuous service. Actual working days 160. But you need to add maternity leave also. She took maternity leave of 100 days. Now, 160 plus 100, 260 days. So, for us, 240 is required. So, 260 is greater than 240. Therefore, she is in continuous service. She is in continuous service. Understood, my dear students? Okay, sir. This is regular establishment. We understood. Coming to the seasonal establishment. Seasonal establishment. Example, sugar manufacturing industry. Do you think sugar manufacturing industry operate 365 days in a year? No, because it's a seasonal crop. Sugarcane is a seasonal crop. So, these sugarcane industries will work for only 6 months in a year. Now, the point in case of seasonal establishments, applying a 95 days, 120 days, 240 days, 190 days will not give good result because sir, season, suppose imagine season 180 days, how can you ask employee to work for 190 days? How can you ask employee to work for 240 days? Understood. So in case of seasonal establishment also, you need to apply test one. You need to apply test one, uninterrupted service. No, 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 sir. Some interruptions are there, sir. Then apply test two. Apply test 2. In case of test 2, don't apply 120-95. Just apply attendance, whether attendance 75% of working days or not. Suppose season operating days 100 days. 100 days. Season operational working days 100. 100 into 75%. 75 days. Suppose Mr. E worked for 80 days, sir. He is in continuous service. Mr. F worked for 70 days, sir. Not in continuous service. Understood my dear students. So for test one, there is no change in establishment whether seasonal or unseasonal. Test one is applicable to all. Coming to test two, I classify establishments into two types, seasonal, unseasonal. This one is for unseasonal and next one, seasonal establishment, I clearly told you. Okay, okay. Continuous service, understood sir. Like that, employee should work for five years. 5 years continuous service then only employee or worker is eligible to receive gratuity understood suppose sir one year i joined a limited next year b limited next year again i came back to a limited sir now am i in continuous service sir no i'm not in continuous service break is there so continuous service first understand continuous service now that continuous service like that you need to satisfy five consecutive years then only you are eligible to receive gratuity. Now coming to the computation part. How much amount sir? Lump sum amount how much part sir? How much amount sir? 15 by 26. The logic behind 15 by 26 is half month's wages. Half month's salary. Half month. Sir half month means 15 divided by 30 no sir. No 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 no. They considered 26 working days. 
they consider 26 as working days. So 15 divided by 26, 15 is half month, 26 is working days. Into last drawn salary at the time of termination of service, how much salary you took? Basically in salary, you will find basic, dearness allowance, HRA, bonus, overtime wages, perquisites, other allowances. But for the purpose of gratuity, you should consider only two components. One is basic wages and next one is dearness allowance. So it excludes bonus, overtime wages and HRA. Any other allowances you should not consider into completed years of service. I told you, if it is in excess of six months, if it is in excess of six months, you need to consider it as one full year. But after computation, that employee is eligible to receive gratuity of maximum of 20 months wages or 20 lakhs. Suppose last drawn salary is 6,000 rupees, sir. 6,000, sorry, 26,000 rupees, sir. 26,000 rupees into 15 by 26. And he worked for, he worked for 10 years. He worked for 10 years. Now, how much, sir? 15,000, 1 lakh 50,000 rupees. If you observe the calculation, 1 lakh 50,000 rupees. This 1 lakh 50,000 is subject to the limit of 20 lakhs, maximum 20 months wages. Of course, if employee calculation, he got 43 lakhs. He can demand only 20 lakhs. There is no obligation on employer to pay more than 20 lakhs. But if employer is ready to pay more than 20 lakhs, okay, employee can claim that gratuity. But there is no obligation on employer to pay more than 20 lakhs or 20 months wages. Understood, my dear students? Now, some special points, special points. Peace rated workers, they had a doubt. Piece rated workers means they get salary proportionate to the number of pieces they produced. Suppose on each piece they produce like toys or you know uh, packing items. If you if you observe packing items, so number of items you packed into two rupees, two rupees per packing. So one thousand items uh, he packed, sir. One thousand into two, two thousand rupees. 1500, 3000 rupees like that. So in case of peace rated workers, don't take last drawn salary, just uh, average the last three months wages or last three months salary. Average of last three months salary that you need to consider as last drawn salary. Last three months, last three months, average it. Next one, in case of seasonal establishments, the calculation is not 15 by 26, it is 7 by 26, 7 days, 7 days per season, 7 days per season, 7 days per season and 26 as usual working days in a month. So 7 by 26 into last month drawn salary into number of seasons and one more special point we had that is disabled employee, disabled employee. Suppose LNT recruited a civil engineer. LNT recruited Mr. E, who is a civil engineer. So he joined organization in the year 2001. Till 2020, he is in a normal position only. Normal position only. So in 2020, March, what happened, sir? While on the job, while doing job, he fell down. As a result, a uh, leg break happened. You know, legs cut. Now, before disablement, his salary was 50,000. And after disablement, LNT went to employee and asked, Sir, at least do clerical work, sir. At least do, at least perform clerk services, sir. As a clerk, we will pay you 10,000 salary. And for 10,000, he worked for two years, Sunday. In 2022, he retired from LNT. He retired from LNT. Almost 22 years he worked. How many years he worked, Andy? 22 years worked. Now, 22 into last run salary, imagine 10,000. 22 into 10,000 into 15 by 26, he will receive less gratuity. But this 10,000, uh, you know, amount 10,000, it came to 10,000 because of disablement. So, to protect the interest of employee, lawmaker came up with a dual calculation. Two times here calculation will happen. One is prior to disablement. The next one is after disablement. Prior to disablement, he worked for 20 years. So 15 by 26 into 50,000 into 20 years. And after disablement, 15 by 26 into 10,000 into 2 years. 2 years. Of course, 2 amounts he will receive only at the time of termination of service only. 2 amounts he will receive at the time of termination of service only. 
not at the time of disablement our fundamental rule don't forget our fundamental rule he is entitled to receive gratuity only at the time of termination of service but this gratuity is subject to forfeiture general rule ma gratuity is a statutory right of employee and no employee is prohibited from claiming gratuity amount no employee is prohibited from claiming gratuity amount but we had two grounds where you can forfeit gratuity amount one is employee behavior rituals simply you know speaking loudly disturbing other employees from not doing the work disturbing work environment spoiling work environment you know making some fake allegations as a result our work environment is getting disturbed in that case you can terminate employee even without payment of gratuity suppose he is eligible to receive gratuity of 3 lakhs you may pay 1 lakh or you may pay zero wholly or partial forfeiture of gratuity wholly or partial forfeiture of gratuity cases where employee uh, is a uh, behave employee behavior is like rigorous or disorderly conduct violence moral turpitude moral turpitude means simply you know immoral or unethical simply daily you know employee he is taking employer properties he is taking employer properties suppose working in employ working in the uh, factory and suddenly boss left his watch employee keeping that watch in his pocket unethical immoral so committing a uh, simply you know theft robbery cheating employer so in these cases employer can forfeit gratuity completely or partially and next one sir employee negligent sir employee negligent or employee willful omission actually he need to take care of employer properties but he was not following the instructions as a result some certain damage happened to the property of employer certain damage happened to the property of employer suppose one worker security got he is sleeping he is sleeping at night times as a result you know some thieves entered into the premises and they looted some property of employer in that case in that case to the extent of to the extent of loss to the extent of loss to employer employer can forfeit the gratuity so here two cases ma wholly forfeiture or partially forfeiture first one second one to the extent of loss of the employer to the extent of loss to the employer employer can forfeit remember very important point so in case of rituals disorderly conduct violence moral turpitude activities employer can forfeit complete gratuity or partial gratuity and where employee is negligent or employee's willful omission causes damage to the employer property then employer can forfeit gratuity to the extent of loss to the employer but there is a, a process there is a process uh, there is a procedure for forfeiture there is a procedure what is the procedure sir first uh, employer should give show cause notice to employee he need to ask he need to ask employee you committed this mistake that's why i'm making forfeiture of gratuity and you need to take response from employee simply you know simply simple words opportunity of being heard after giving opportunity of being heard you are eligible to forfeit gratuity either partially wholly or to the extent of loss to the employer understood my dear students everyone so without asking employee show cause show cause means uh, employee because of you i suffered this loss what is your reply what is your response collect response from the employee and then issue final order and then employer will issue final order regarding forfeiture of gratuity next one my, my dear students applicability of gratuity act so with this you know the crux of the topic crux main part of the chapter completed main part of the chapter completed you know we'll we'll go through some basic definitions payment of gratuity act is applicable to factory plantation mines oil fields railway port railway companies ports railway companies you can get the list of the railway companies in google ma so railway companies that will manufacture uh, uh, bogies that will lay down the railway tracks so that will provide services see factory plantation on the ground below the ground mines oil fields and two transportation undertakings railway companies ports 
Apart from the six, next one, shops or other establishments where ten or more workers employed on any day, see, on any day preceding 12 months, on any day preceding 12 months, on any day preceding 12 months, that's it. Our Payment of Gratuity Act is applicable. See, once applicable, lifetime applicable. Suppose, sir, uh, take DMART as an example. One day, the number of workers is eight. Suddenly, three added. The very next day, four resigned the very next day that means one day total staff strength how much 11 that means you know more than 10 immediately next day four people resigned sir now count came to seven count came to seven now payment of gratuity act applicable or not applicable sir applicable because one day one day we had more than 10 workers understood my dear students once applicable forever applicable next one appropriate government sir appropriate government see appropriate government can make rules and regulations with respect to the establishment appropriate government can exempt certain establishments from payment of gratuity act suppose you know i'm i'm employer i'm willing to pay more more amount as a gratuity payment of gratuity is giving me power to pay only some 15 by 15 day salary 15 day salary per year but i want to pay i'm interested in paying 100 day salary as a gratuity 100 day salary as a gratuity. Now, I will write a letter to the appropriate government. If appropriate government uh, accept me, then you know, no need to follow payment of gratuity act. I will follow my own rules and regulations. So, Sima, factories or establishments, F means factory, E means establishment, belonging to central government or under the control of central government. Next one, any industry, any establishment, any establishment having branches more than one state. If you take Reliance industry, it is not belonging to central government. It is not under the control of central government. But it is having branches in more than one state. Next, all ports, major ports, mines, oil fields, railway companies. For them, appropriate government means central government. So, who is having power to frame rules and regulations to all these entities? Central government. Next one, in case of others, in case of others, you know, private owned factory private owned establishments uh, which are operating only in one state for them appropriate government means state government for them appropriate government means state government next one ma. employee employee yes you can go through the definition of employee so employee means any person employed in the establishment for wages obviously for certain remuneration whether paid or payable in cash Nature of work might be anything, manual, clerical, supervisory, technical, administrative purpose, anything. But I'm, I wrote here certain important points. So, employee means any worker. But employee includes teacher. A recent amendment in 2009, I think, uh, as per the amendment, you know, employee includes teacher. But employee excludes apprentice. Apprentice is simply trainee, ma. Trainee won't come under uh, employee. Trainee won't come under the definition of uh, employee. So he joined industry for training, not for earning. Training. Next one, person holding post governed by central government, state government, because they will get more gratuity amount. They will get you know uh, uh, more uh, gratuity as per favorable terms more favorable terms so claiming gratuity according to those terms and claiming gratuity according to payment of gratuity act definitely employer will die definitely employer will die so post under the control of central government state government you know person holding those posts is holding actually d missing don't worry uh, small small spelling mistakes please ignore don't uh, consider them so don't zoom them okay so person holding posts regulated by central government state governments so they are not treated as employee for payment of gratuity act for payment of gratuity act he is not employee for other acts he is employee for other acts he is employee so with this employee definition completed wages i told you wages for the purpose of gratuity act wages for the purpose of gratuity act is basic salary plus dearness allowance basic salary plus dearness allowance see wages all earnings emolument simply earnings earned by employee includes dearness allowance so dearness allowance means what sir now to meet increased cost of living suppose last year this time or one one liter visit edible oil packet is some 80 rupees 
now it became 180 rupees so inflation so cost of living increased right to meet increased cost of living employer will pay additional amount we call it as dearness allowance and wages excludes bonus commission hra overtime and other allowances is it clear so this is the definition for wages wages so lost drawn salary you should consider only basic and da basic and da suppose employee salary is 90000 sir don't take 90000 for the purpose of computation of gratuity in this 90000 basic salary is 45000 sir dearness allowance is uh, some 10000 sir and all other allowances sir remaining amount some 35000 sir now consider only 55000 for the purpose of computation of gratuity next uh, employer obligation sum very simple employer obligations so whenever he start an industry whenever he start an establishment he need to file forms with a controlling authority is exactly wrong answer so today today i started uh, one small shop vmart for example vmart in that vmart i recruited only four members four four workers are there no payment of gratuity act applicable to me no payment of gratuity act is not applicable to me payment of gratuity act is applicable only my number of employees you know if they go to 10 or more so once my number of employees uh, you know number of employees reach 10 from that date onwards within 30 days within 30 days a small error within 30 days of applicability of act file form a with controlling authority file form a with a controlling authority and next one when there is change in employer particulars suppose i sold my establishment to yes now employer has been changed v to yes now yes has to file form b within 30 days it's not greater than or equal to within 30 days within 30 days with controlling authority and next one form c Okay, small clerical error. I repeat, small clerical error. This is within 30 days and within 30 days. Coming to 60, at least 60 days. So if employer is having intention to close the business, if employer is having intention to close the business, at least 60 days before closure, he need to file Form C with a controlling authority. So A, B, C, A, applicability of act, B, change in employer particular, C, intention to close the business. So that controlling authority will maintain a track record okay and entrance entrance of the establishment you need to uh, display the details of officer authorized to receive notices under this chapter it might be you know you just paint it or flexi flexi or you know some metallic strip anything is allowed but display should be there at the entrance of establishment display should be there details of the officer who is entitled to receive notices under this uh, chapter and it should be in two languages one is english language and the second one is language which is understood by major employees major employees working in that uh, working in that establishment so the the moment they are going to retire the moment they are going to get termination of services they can file forms with those officers sir next month i am going to get retired so do my gratuity, I mean, simply, simply calculate my gratuity amounts like that. You know, employees can write letter to that officer. That's why at the entrance, you need to display officer details who is authorized to receive notices. Next one, ma. Employee will file nomination forms with employer. Why? Because today, artificial persons will have going concern concept. Artificial persons will have going concern going concern concept natural persons like me there is no uh, guarantee each and every natural person will survive for 100 years there is no guarantee so now the point is employee after completion of 15 years of service suddenly he met with an accident and he died he deceased the point is who is entitled to receive gratuity legal heirs but legal heirs are more in number if you take family definition if you take family definition imagine uh, employee as a male person employee male person employee employee spouse employee dependent parents spouse dependent parents and uh, 
these two people you know children whether married or not children whether married or not next one next one in case of predeceased son predeceased son that means son died before employee in that case widow of predeceased son son to the pre child of predeceased son simply you know grandson granddaughter so family definition it is very simple family definition employee dependent parents uh, spouse dependent parents spouse next one children whether married or not next uh, predeceased son case you know widow of the predeceased son simply you know wife of the predeceased son child to the predeceased son all these people come under the family definition so you need to select one candidate and you need to nominate him so that disputes will be eliminated simply disputes shall be eliminated that is the only agenda so sir, what is the time limit for filing nomination form sir 90 days of commencement of the act suppose I joined establishment in the year 1969 this act came in the year 1972 by the time act came I completed three years of service so in that case within 90 days of commencement of act file nomination form other cases after completion of one year I joined organization exactly on 20th February 2022 exactly after one year exactly after one year 22 2023 from here onwards within 30 days file nomination form you may get a doubt sir employees entitled to receive gratuity after five years no sir but in case of uh, dis death disablement five years is not applicable right so after completion of one year so today this point is prevailing this one is for old people who joined the uh, organization before commencement of the act so within 30 days of completion of one year within 30 days of completion of one year file these forms with uh, whom employer definitely nominee should be family member ma you can file nomination form in favor of family member in form number f sir at the time of nomination form i didn't have family sir orphan then in uh, in favor of friends any person any person but having family filing nomination in favor of any person shall be void i repeat one more time i had family but i'm filing nomination form in favor of my friend such nomination valid or invalid sir invalid such nomination valid or invalid invalid simply void but at the time of nomination i'm not having family then okay file nomination in favor of any person in form number f but subsequent to acquiring family subsequent to acquiring family so i got married i got spouse i had spouse next uh, spouse uh, dependent parents so subsequent to acquiring family simply add uh, file form g with the employer next one modification Suppose first instance I file nomination form in favor of spouse. Later I want to modify it to dependent parents, then file H. Revoking previous form, giving new form. Next point determination of gratuity amount. Determination of gratuity amount. See ma here applicant will file application with employer. Who can be applicant, sir? Any person, employee or legal hair or nominee. Suppose employee is alive, employee. Employee deceased, nominee. Nominee not available, then legal hair. So within 30 days, here the time period is also very important. If employee knows his retirement date, then 30 days before termination of service. 30 days before termination of service. Sir, employee don't know, employee don't know his termination, sir. Suddenly it happens, sir. Then within 30 days of termination, if he know termination of service, 30 days before termination. If he don't know, then 30 days after termination. Coming to nominee, same 30 days. But legal here, within one year, within one year, they can file application with the employer. Now, employer shall determine the gratuity amount. And he will intimate the same to applicant as well as controlling authority in form L if claim is admissible. If claim is not admissible, he will file form M with the controlling authority. Sir, why claim inadmissible, sir? Why certain, in certain cases claim is inadmissible? Why, sir? Employee thinking that he worked overtime, as a result, he got salary of 40,000. Actually, normal salary, normal salary 25,000, but last month he worked for 40,000. He worked overtime and he got 40,000. He worked overtime, he got 40,000. Now, he's, taking, he's thinking like this, 15 by 26 into 40,000 into some 15 years. 
But employer is selling. No, no, no. It's not forty. It's just twenty thousand, twenty-five thousand. Fifteen by twenty-six into twenty-five thousand into fifteen years. Now there is a dispute between employee and employer. Now simply file form M with the controlling authority. But within thirty days, employer should pay gratuity amount. I repeat, within thirty days, employer should pay gratuity amount. Delay happens, sir. Then he is he is liable to pay interest at the rate of ten percent per annum for the delayed period. Of course. If the delay is due to fault of employee, employee is not producing documents, then go to controlling authority. C M is not chartered accountant. C M is controlling authority. Get approval from controlling authority. In that case, employer is not liable to pay any interest. Employer is not liable to pay any interest. General rule for delay period, interest is applicable. For delay period, interest is applicable. But if that fault is due to employee, and after getting approval from controlling authority, employer is not liable to pay any interest. Next one. Mode of payment, sir. Mode of payment. It should be always in cash, not in kind. Not in kind. Cash means not physical cash. Cash means you know through check, demand draft. Kind means you know giving some power of properties. Suppose yes, take a uh, some ten grams of gold, one kilogram of silver, or you know take certain raw material, take certain finished goods. Kind prohibited. Only cash ah. Uh, allowed only cash allowed next one in case of uh, nominee being a minor in case of nominee or legal heir being a minor you can make fixed deposit in a scheduled bank because uh, the entitled person is minor so until he clear he attains the age of majority that amount shall be deposited in a scheduled bank and if amount gratuity amount is less than 1000 rupees if gratuity amount is less than 1000 rupees if employee is willing to take gratuity amount he can get gratuity amount through postal money order and one more interesting point is for meeting postal i mean for meeting postal charges so who is liable to incur this postal charges sir first employer will pay postal charges later employer is allowed to deduct that amount from gratuity amount of course ma 1000 rupees is very small amount but This act came in the year 1972. At that point of time, thousand is a material amount, so there is no amendment in this amount. So just uh, follow the act. If gratuity amount is less than thousand, employee can get gratuity through postal money order, and uh, postal charges can be deducted from that amount. Last point, applicant. Suppose you know if employer is not paying any gratuity, or employer is not accepting nomination form. Employer reject gratuity application. In those cases, applicant can file a note, can give a notice to controlling authority, either personally or registered post acknowledgement due through registered post, through registered post acknowledgement due or in personal mode. He can give in he can give intimation to the controlling authority. The time limit is ninety days. Of course, ninety days completed, no problem. Controlling authority, controlling authority. After getting uh, the reasons why why delay happened, why delay happened, so controlling authority may permit the application, and controlling authority will give notice to both applicants as well as uh, employer. If applicant is more than one person, suppose trade union sir, so twenty people raise ah uh, twenty people termination of service happened to the twenty people, and all twenty people gave intimation to the uh, controlling authority. In that case. Controlling authority may give forward that notice to any secretary or trade union member. In case of more number of people, more number of people, only two people, sir. Then it will give notice to applicant and employer. So simply, code of civil procedure will apply. Like you know, appearing before controlling authority whenever they call, whenever they give notice, whenever they give notice, both applicant and employer should attend the uh, proceedings. and they need to produce documents based on this based on this controlling authority shall record the findings and based on it either he will dismiss the appeal or he will order employer to pay the gratuity amount gratuity amount and coming to the recovery proceedings coming to the recovery proceedings suppose controlling authority ordered employer to pay gratuity amount but employer is still not paying gratuity now what controlling authority will do controlling authority will forward this notice this order to the district collector and district collector will sell the or will dispose the assets of the employer will sell the assets of the employer whatever amount he recovered he will distribute or he will pay that amount to the employees in the name of gratuity 
the point is the proceedings are similar to land revenue arrears land revenue arrears so land revenue arrears means continuously if you are not paying municipal taxes or property taxes district collector is having a power to seize the property sell the property under auction and from sale proceeds they can adjust the arrears land revenue arrears similarly similarly gratuity recovery proceedings will be taken so controlling authority will give order to the collector and collector district collector will sell the assets of the employer and sale proceeds he will adjust against the gratuity amounts so with this payment of gratuity marathon completed take a small break and i'll come with the factories act marathon <laughs>